So hi everyone, today we are going to talk about Colgate and palm olive. Actually, palm olive was very weird word, but you will get to see why it's actually called palm olive. They had a very weird slogan. I don't think it was actually their slogan or anything, but it's Colgate World of Care, Stronger, Healthier Gum. You can kind of sense what their focused product is. So let's get started. This is the company profile. The mission statement is committed to act with compassion, integrity, honesty, and high ethnics in all situations to listen with respect to others and to value differences. The company is also committed to protect the global environment to enhance the communities where Colgate Palm Olive people live and work and to be compliant with government laws and regulation. That was the mission statement. And for the vision statement, as we plan our strategies to sustain growth for the years to come, our core values of caring, global teamwork, and continuous improvement will continue to drive our future initiatives. But for January, this is what I thought the company does. I don't know, it's a toothpaste company, guys. <laughs> like, what else is there for me to give a review on? They just make toothpaste and you use their toothpaste. And I actually didn't think that the full name was Colgate Palm Olive. And for the longest time, I thought the company's name was Colgate. So let's actually get started. So back, 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 long time. For a while, the pictures are going to be in black and white. But we'll start off with William Colgate. He was actually born in England. He was a devout Baptist English immigrant. He moved to Baltimore to become actually a soap boiler apprentice. Wow. When I heard the word apprentice, I was like, wow, this is really long company, like old company, guys. And then later, he moved to New York as a candle maker. But... He noticed that there's a lot of issues working there. So from all the knowledges that he got as a soap boiler apprentice, along with a candle maker apprentice, and seeing all those mismanaged from the managers, he decided to start a business. And that happened in 1806. The business began and he started as a starch soap and candle business in Dutch Street, New York, which nowadays look like this. It's not there anymore. <laughs> and funny story is that right away when they started, their business wasn't going that well. But around 1817, they started picking up because they, you know, decided to advertise on newspapers. So back then, the method of marketing in 1800 was to advertise. And you will see a lot of pictures with old newspapers for this presentation. Now in 1820, they were able to earn a lot of money from what they sold of soap and starch. So they actually started a new starch factory that in New Jersey, but it actually discontinued in 1866 due to a fire. And you kind of know that you don't really see a starch made from Colgate's, right? And in 1896, they made their famous, famous, famous toothpaste and I think this kind of continued but what's interesting was that actually back in 1873 they started with a jar form toothpaste so basically your toothpaste was in a jar you can't really squeeze them I'm guessing you might have had to dip your toothbrush into the jar and to brush your teeth and you know probably there's sanity issues or it was very inconvenient to put it in a jar right so what they did was they put it in a collapsible tube that's still being used today that actually looks like this. You know, it kind of looks familiar. It kind of looks like a hand cream too, you know. <laughs> so, and what's interesting was that they actually said we couldn't improve the product thinking their, their product of toothpaste was at the time good enough. So we improved the tube. And I thought that was a cute text that they added to the, the box. And it actually was able to be sold pretty well. And with this tube idea, what else became a tube was shaving cream in 1912. Ta-da! <laughs> so apparently you have it in your hand with a tube and then you like 
you know, I guess make foam and then you just put it on your face. So it's supposed to be a good product, but um, you don't really see the shaving cream these days in a tube. So you know what's being successful and what's being not. Now, in 1914 to 1920, they decided to go international and do a lot of acquisition. So the first um, international subsidiary was in Canada in 1914. And then in 1920, they did establish operations in Europe, Asia, Latin America, and Africa. So they already in 1920s were able to like go beyond. I think this was like the India newspaper where they're, you know, saying, hey, use our toothbrush. It's really good and minty, right? And this was actually a very essential process or a step in their history because they needed to get close for the gap between their rival, Procter & Gamble. Now, actually, Colgate would have ended in 1928 and we would have actually stopped this company review. So what happened was that back in 1864, there was this soap factory that was opened by BJ Johnson in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So a company decided to make soap in Milwaukee and it actually got really popular, which actually became the Palm Olive Company. And what made them really popular was their Palm Olive soap, which looks like kind of this, because it actually uses the palm oil and then the olive oil and that's why it kind of got the name palm olive and it actually became the best soap out there that people kept using and then what's also interesting was that in 1872 a different soap company in kansas city was opened by the pete brothers and they actually mainly focused on laundry soap in midwest and western europe western us and their focus was to make crystal white soap for laundries, I guess. And yeah, so what happened now to 1926 was that Palm Olive, the soap manufacturer, decided to merge with Pete to become like a Palm Olive Pete company. So they just took it and, you know, let's make the best soap manufacturers in US by merging. But then in 1928, what happened was that Palm Olive Pete actually bought Colgate's and now the company became Colgate Palm Olive Pea Company and so actually till 1928 the business was actually very rough for Colgate's because William passed away within 30-40 years of making the business and his son had to take over but he actually didn't want to take over but he had a, like the obligations or he needed to do it but if he's not really into the product and everything there's no way a business can succeed so you can kind of guess that Palm Olive P decided to buy Colgate's. What was really good was that in 1933 Colgate's actually got to regain the control over their sector of Colgate after the 1929 stock market crash. So one of their family member decided to become the president and it was all good. And by 1953, the name officially became Colgate Palm Olive. So you could see that their like company name, it was very long of Colgate Palm Olive Pete Co. The reason why they officially became the name was that the Pete company decided to drop out, so they just became Colgate Palm Olive. Now moving on in 1930s, a lot of my chat was shocked, but they are actually listed on the New York Stock Exchange on March 13th because they did an IPO. Nothing much, it's back in 1930s, right? And in 1960s, so this was kind of interesting, I did kind of miss a so in 1960s, what happened was that after, you know, like they merged and they're like, okay, let's get a bit, a very good business, you know, being successful and everything. They got a new leader. And what new leader means they get new like products. So George, this guy's name is George. The newspaper is kind of, you know, um, not working well, but he became the president. And at the time, Colgate was kind of hoping that they would give a similar success internationally as they were doing so well in the U.S. So they decided to make different products at the time. And one of the infamous products that they were able to create was the dish soap. You know, you've heard of it, right? It's like, oh, 
Oh my god, dishwashing liquid to soften hands. Actually, not really to soften hands, but they were like, oh yeah, use. So it was introduced around this time. It was sold in over 35 countries. It's still being one of those popular products being sold. Next, we got the cold power laundry detergent. So it's like, I guess it's supposed to be very, very good at like, you know, doing laundry. Better product than what they had before. And then next was pretty interesting. And then what was really interesting, because I still use this to this day, was that you know how Colgate is famous for their toothpaste? What they decided to do is they like upgraded the toothpaste by adding an MFP fluoride. And that was actually a clinically proven product to reduce cavities. So back when they had the toothpaste, there was nothing related to cavities. But like, you know, they did a lot of trial and errors and you noticed that there's it, like people still have cavities even if they brush their teeth. I'm kind of guessing like Colgate kind of started with this adding fluoride into their toothpaste. And then finally they added a new food wrap called baggies. And it's supposed to be like a sandwich bag where we're used to the Ziploc. And what happened as a result was that the company sale grew between 8 to 9% every year in 1960s, right? So once they started building the ideas, you kind of get a point where, hey, we're kind of like, can't think of any good ideas. We really need something, but should we just hire more people or what should we do? And they decided to actually do a lot of acquirements of other companies. So one of the first thing was 1972 Hoyt Laboratories, which actually later became the Colgate Oral Pharmaceuticals that, you know, kind of in charge of the dental part. Another interesting thing was 1976 Hills Pet Nutrition, which if you guys have dogs might have used this product, but it's actually a very good pet nutrition, very recommended product for dog. And how this started was actually in 1938, Dr. Mark Morris developed a pet food to help save a dog named Buddy from kidney disease, which ended up being kind of like a first Hills prescription diet product. And that's how they got their success. And so Colgate actually not only focuses on toothpaste, but is actually very famous for like dog or pet products because of Hills. And then lastly was the Minnetonka Corporation in 1987. And basically they acquired soft soap liquid soap business. Another soap business, right? And you're kind of like, so what's the difference between the old one and the new one? This one looks like this. You know what you guys are all used to. So the first transaction the company actually had made related to personal care area, you know, we've only seen what like, you know, laundry, soap, dishwashing soap, toothpaste, but now it's more for like your hand soap. So they decided to pay $40 million and 500,000 shares of Colgate to acquire this company. But shockingly, this product failed to sustain custom consumer interest and reach sale expectation over the long time. So maybe right away, this product wasn't that popular, but you know, like now we see this and now we know what this is. New business started, 1987, toothbrush. Colgate plus toothbrush was introduced, making it being sold annually of 1.6 billion Colgate toothbrushes, which is a lot. But even if they seem like you were doing so good, Colgate was actually going downhills around this time because Procter & Gamble was rocking. By like 1984 to 1986, there were a lot, a lot, a lot of layoffs, a lot of closing plans, you know, like a couple of like thousand people, you know, not having jobs at this time because, you know, they weren't getting that much money. So they really needed to keep thinking about what to do to increase their company. Like, okay, it seems like hand soap's not working, their bag thingy, like Ziploc bag type of sort. Another set of acquirements between 1991 and 1992. So first one in 1991, they got Murphy Oil Soap from Murphy Phoenix Corporation. Murphy is a wood cleaner that is uh, made in US. And this actually was a good increased sale by marketing in US and overseas. So that's kind of what they wanted to do. And so what Murphy wanted to get from Colgate was, you know, you guys are good with overseas and US, you know, we kind of want you guys to like market that area with our products. 
And then, you know, Colgate was like, we've never been in this like cleaning area type of soap industry. So we'll be partners. We'll like try to sell your products and it'll be all good. Now, next thing that they bought was Men and Company which is deodorant. <laughs> they haven't done deodorant, so it might have been a good time to acquire this. They acquired it for $670 million, and it was definitely a new step of what they were doing. Still some type of, you could say, soap, but it's still, like, part of, like, personal care, and they, you know, they moved from soft, like, hand soap and they wanted to do more of personal care like deodorant was invented probably around this time so and then since they got all these other companies that they you know brought on board they needed to make another international expansion their their two biggest international expansion was to central europe and to russia and so some of the actions that kind of included was that you know some of like the factories might have closed in the places that they already had in Europe but you know they're trying to focus on like the right type of factories to be invented so for example like liquid dish washing detergent products would be kind of manufactured in US but would be delivered and it seems that they had a couple of manufacturing facilities also in Latin America being you know developed and created it it seemed like they knew what they're doing, but even till this day, you kind of wonder what this company does. Now, between 2004 and 2011, there wasn't much that was invented, but they did end up still acquiring a lot of companies, first starting with the GABA oral care business. As you know, we just moved to expanding to the international like countries. So GABA is actually a Swiss companies tied Sorry, Swiss company tied with a lot of dental community. So they had a lot of connections related to that. And along with that, they had sales of almost 300 million in 15 European countries, of which over 200 million is oral care. So for them, who's, you know, their main, main target is toothpaste, which is a perfect connection to for them to have. And then the next one that they made connections with was Senex personal care brand in Europe. And what that company does is they make lotions, you know, like personal lotions, sensitive to personal care. They were purchased for 672 million euros and they were a pretty popular brand back in Europe for them to purchase. And finally, they did purchase Tom of Maine, another oral and personal care business. So you can kind of see what their focus is when they're acquiring companies. You know, you've seen personal care or either oral, either soap. So you can kind of guess what their top three like important brand is. Now moving on to 2019. Team, they've actually developed their first recyclable toothpaste tube. It's actually a thing now that they've developed. And they've actually decided to share this technology with competitors like uh, Procter & Gamble, SJ Johnson. One of their C-level people decided to say, you know, they, they wanted to make a tube that's like part of the circular economy by keeping the plastic productive and eliminating waste. That's something that's been like the recent popular news in 2009, uh, 2019, other than a lot of the acquirements of smaller companies or maybe startups. So let's move on to Colgate in 2021. Right now, for being a very long company and having a very long history, you would think that there would be a lot of fluctuation between like, you know, they, we've mentioned a lot of like Procter & Gamble. So, you know, rivalry came, seems like it might have dropped. It probably didn't, yada, yada, yada. And what's kind of shocking was that we just talked about like the dot-com bubble and even if that happened, the stock didn't drop as much as maybe we might have thought of. But some things to point out that I found interesting was maybe, you know, the 2007-2008 crisis that um, we kind of talked about. So right in this region, their stock actually declined from levels of around 27 in December of 2007 to $23 in March 20, 2009. So it was a big drop, but then, you know, Back in 2010, they, you know, went back up. It wasn't like a big issue for them, at least, because they were able to get their business back up within maybe like a year since it's early 2010. But through the crisis, their stock did decline by 13%. So moving on, 
you've noticed that you know 2010 2008 2009 it seems like there was an issue related to you know the crisis you know that there's a little issue with the pandemic of covid that happened which actually did increase the stock price of some down to 63.9 dollars from 73.8 dollars but it was able to recover it's not a bad deal so then you kind of get to a point where it seems like there's a huge drop in this little region right you guys kind of see it and you're kind of like oh like what's the issue there well like their business you know obviously not every time your business goes well so for this colgate had to actually cut up 3,800 jobs and that might have been a reason why they had a big stock drop but you could kind of see that all these issues going on does affect a company's stock prices now continuing what will happen in 2021 or in the future is that colgate and phillips are joining forces for electric toothbrushes in latin american countries so it seems like they haven't had much to do with like developing new products or everything but they've been trying to really focus down to what countries or you know like what places what region needs most help related to like toothbrush toothpaste or any of those like personal hygiene and the biggest place that they've noticed was probably latin america so you can kind of see later on that they're selling the most in latin american countries later but now what everyone is probably interested in would be you know they announced the third quarter so didn't give you guys the big graph but as they said the net sales increased 6.5 percent organic sales increased by 4.5 it seems that the eps declined 7 percent to 0.75 and then we have a bit of net cash provided by operations with $2,219 million for the first nine months of 2021. Their leadership in toothpaste continued with its global market share uh, at 39.5% year to date. And Colgate's leadership in manual toothbrushes also continued with a global market share at 31% year to date. So, you know, they're like, they're, they're doing fine. So we've talked last time that maybe we should start comparing them with another company that's very similar to them. And what is Colgate and Palm Olive very similar to is Procter and Gamble. You have no clue, like just Googling rival or comp competitor you get this and not only did it, is it like a recent issue or like a past issue, they still compare them till this day like i found a news that was from 2021 so let's start kind of with png their development for now is they're introduced actually a new sanitizer spray called microband 24 during the pandemic they're actually maintaining its reputation as a most consistent dividend paying companies in the u.s so you know they're still getting products out related to sanitizing stuff we just found out about that and then on the other hand colgate's actually focusing on more of the sustainability and social impact strategies so that they can reach it by 2025. And they've been creating stuff related to like COVID, neutralizing COVID-19 virus for mouth washing, toothpaste, some type of, you know, cleaning inside the mouth, which is a good idea. Now for industry ranking, they both have A's in the industry rank kind of makes sense everyone knows both companies but png is ranked number one out of 34 stocks in the consumer goods industry while colgate is actually ranked fourth in the same group so that maybe png has it now in terms of profitability colgate return of equity and return of assets have 457.1 percent and 15.7 percent compared to Procter & Gamble of 28, 28.9% uh, and 9.1%. It really depends what you favor the most. Let's say you've picked industry ranking to be what you want to determine to purchase a stock, then you can kind of guess what goes better than the other to buy stock. And then if you pick 
profitability. Colgate is doing much better. So a lot of analysts are kind of, you know, leaning towards maybe Colgate for now is doing better, but they're, they're not like that much of a difference. It's not like Tesla and Neo. It's not that big difference of, you know, Tesla's already to 1000 per share compared to like Neo. That's like a couple hundreds. And what I found really interesting while doing this like research was they actually have a site where they compare those two companies in terms of working. Which company would you work, would you like to be working for? For Colgate, you know, a lot of people were like, hey, we really like it. So they actually got much more positive feedback compared to Procter & Gamble. So like they had comparison of CEOs where they actually preferred Colgate CEO much better than Procter & Gamble. They've had like working environment, diversity. Also Colgate was much more diverse than Procter & Gamble. It's all dependent on employees who work there. So you never know if it's only the employees who really hated it, who's putting in the information, but at least for that, you know, one website that was analyzing the comparison, it seems that, you know, Colgate is more in the favorable hands. And finally, what I found that was very adorable was that they will always be a long-term rivalry because guys, actually Colgate decided to sue PNG because PNG said ineffective and essentially worthless on their radio and television commercial. So Colgate just got mad and they were like, okay, well like you suck. So we're just gonna like sue you, but they actually lost. But you know, it's like even these like small details that are just kind of like hating on each other. So maybe by having Procter & Gamble, which actually has been a very long company. It's been a company since I'm not, I'm maybe like the 1800s. Maybe that's why those two companies are still being one of the two most popular like companies for this consumer good industry. You never know. Generally speaking, you can kind of see which one is being more favorable to this day and you never know what's going to happen in the future. But that's all for call gates. If you guys have any other questions related to it, feel free to ask me. But other than that, I'm done. Woo. <laughs>